Okay, this is pretty similar to the other video I made about taxes, but this one's going to show a subsidy. Again, the subsidy shifts the supply curve down. Um, we don't use the term specific, uh, but it is specific in this case. Um, and we can tell that the subsidy is $2 per unit because the amount by which the supply curve shifted down here or here is equivalent to $2. Okay, so again, we just want to look at effects before and after the subsidy, so consumer surplus would have been here. Producer surplus would have been there. And then it gets a little bit tricky. So after the subsidy, we have a new quantity down here at 70 and a new price that consumers pay at 2. But you have to remember Consumers are going to pay 2 times 70, and that's 140, but producers are actually going to collect 2 more. They're going to collect 2 more from the government, that's what the subsidy is, so they're going to collect another 140, so their total revenue is going to be 280. And again, we can see that if we go 70 times 4, if we bring 4 over, what we notice is that is the point on the original supply curve where suppliers are able to produce 70. So let's have a look at that. So what we see here, I'll drag these up so I can get to them a little bit easier. So what we see here are a few things. First of all, let's look at this area. So this is the amount that the government's going to have to spend on producing the subsidy or uh, um, implementing the subsidy. So the government's going to have to spend two, again, that's the vertical distance here, two to four. So the government's going to have to spend two times 70, that is 140, to get the price down and a higher quantity in the market. That might be okay because we see that producers are going to benefit by this trapezium. And, by, and consumers are going to benefit, so let's go over that. So new producer surplus is going to be this point, the price they get, down to the supply curve. So this entire new triangle represents the new, or I'm sorry, this entire triangle is the producer surplus with the lines representing the new producer surplus. Well, likewise, consumer surplus is going to grow because price fell. Remember, we moved down the demand curve to get to 70 and 2. So we have new consumer surplus that is this area here, the green lines. So, okay, we've almost covered up all of this gray area that was the government spending, but we haven't covered all of it up. And that's where we find the deadweight loss, which is this triangle here, which is representing government spending. Remember what we saw in gray? So it's government spending that isn't creating new producer surplus in blue, or new consumer surplus in green. And this one I always have a little bit of a hard time with because we do need to understand that this is revenue, right? It is revenue, so this, uh, I guess it's 20. Oh yeah, you guys should do this. So you need to be able to calculate all these things, uh, all these areas, so it's gonna be a base of 20, 50 to 70, times a height of two, two to four, so 20 times 2 is 40, then divided by 2. So the deadweight loss here is 20. I hope I did that right. Anyway, what that represents is a certain amount of spending that the government didn't have to do. So in a sense, they have overpaid um, to lower the price to 2 and get quantity demanded or quantity in the market up to 70, which kind of, it kind of stinks because it's somebody's tax money and it could have been used differently. We do have to remember that that money is actually revenue for producers. It's just that it's too much revenue.